can't do that, millions will die. Millions are not dying. Even <laughs> millions around the world are not dying. And we are almost 9,000 million people. So, where is the problem? There's no problem. <laughs> well, uh, well, Don, what, what, what do you make of uh, what IQ is saying and uh, the fact that Elon Musk now is jumping on the bandwagon and saying, yes, let's end this nonsense? Okay. Well, you know, I'll quote Harry Truman when he was asked uh, about uh, Martin Luther King being given the Nobel Prize, and his answer was, I didn't give it to him. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, what, what I mean by that is, uh, so what? Uh, uh, Musk is one, one of a, a million people, and uh, you know what? Uh, uh, you can go and ask 10 people, and 10 people have different uh, opinions. The fact that he's, well, yeah, he's a successful successful man means that uh, uh, maybe he, he knows what he's doing, but I don't think that should be uh, uh, something that will weigh on, on uh, whether we are open the country up or not. Uh, to me, the, the real question is, if we open up the country, well, people like myself, who are over 65, will more of them die? And the, and the, answer, uh, and the answer is, I don't know. And neither does, uh, quite frankly, ever, everybody else. But what, uh, to me, is really more important is, this virus supposedly kills its hosts. Uh, yes. And, and, and to, you know, to me, that's, that's a dangerous. Uh, I still subscribe to the idea that it, it broke away from a Chinese uh, laboratory, and until somebody shows me the fitting will be different, I'm going to hold to that. And to me, it, it smacks of a, a, a virus, a germ being developed uh, f for nefarious purposes. Because, you know, uh, an organ doesn't develop itself to kill its host. It, it, it uh, finds a way for, to live within the host rather than kill the host. Yeah. Uh, um, that's what I was taught many years ago when I covered my first story dealing with germ warfare. And, the, and, the, uh, and to me, that's the question that has to be answered. Whether we break out uh, today or next week or the following week, you know, that's up, up for the experts. And in this particular instance, there are no experts because we never... We haven't had something like this yes. ever happened before. So, you know, you're, you're as much an expert on this as I am. All I know is that when I read the obituaries, it's amazing the number of, of people who are supposedly smart and who are leaders or who are like the uh, author of the uh, of that, well, the one about pie, the, uh, the, uh, uh, the tiger in the lifeboat, he died. I mean, there's some really smart people that died from the virus. So it tells me that either they, they weren't as smart as some other people or there's something wrong, uh, something wrong with the virus. I'm, I'm jumping all over the place, but my bottom line is if, uh, if we open tomorrow or we open next week, it's less important than finding out why that, uh, where that virus came from or, and uh, what was the real purpose of it. I'm back to you, IQ. Look, I agree with you. We need to find out. But at the moment, yeah. the number of people who are committing suicide, the number of people who are abused by their parents, the children, or the wives by their husbands, yeah. and the people who are dying, not from coronavirus, but from other diseases, and they say it's from coronavirus, is beyond but the number of people who have died because of the old age. You can't stop the economy of the whole world because the old age. I'm over 65 too. So I'm not saying it to brag about it. I'm vulnerable. <laughs> but it doesn't mean that because I'm vulnerable that the economy of America will stop, the economy of England will stop. Bull crap. Well, was... some... Go ahead, Look, Don. Or IQ, whichever. Yeah, go on, go on. I'm, I, I don't mean to step on you. Please continue, IQ. No, no, honestly, I mean, we are not uh, conspiracy theorists. We deal with facts, we deal with reality. YouTube closed an account of uh, two American 
doctors in their forties. Oh yes, I, I remember hearing about this. I I stayed one hour and ten minutes listening to every word they said and every question were asked. These two young men, their forties, they had a combined twenty, twenty years, forty years of experience in ER. Yep. yep. And they gave the answers beautifully. There was no excitement. There was no shouting. Everything was done statistically from where? From the governments of the world, not their own statistics. And it showed the number of deaths is 0.05. It's nothing. True, many of the great people are dying because they are 70s and 80s and 90s. They're dying in, uh, in what do you call it? Italy. 90% of the people who died were old age. It attacks old age. Why? Because we are vulnerable. Yeah. It doesn't kill many young people. Only some two or three young people the age of 20 and one child of the age of few months. But the majority are older people. We never close America or France or Germany or anywhere else in the world for the flu. And the flu kills more. I mean... I'm not exaggerating. These are the facts. These are the statistics, not my statistics. These are the available statistics. So these two doctors were saying it. Guess what? YouTube said, ah, they're breaking our rules. What rules do you have, you bastards? <laughs> <laughs> what rules do you have? Anybody who supports <laughs> Trump, rules you close them down. Bastards. Everybody who closes, <laughs> uh, supports Trump, they close them down. Why? Because they are leftists. They're like the Muslims. A Muslim will never debate. Why? He will either shout you down or shoot you down. Why would they never debate you? Because they cannot defend the indefensible. The leftists are the same. Their position is totally and utterly indefensible. So what do they do? They attack you. What happened to Biden? How come he's not defending himself? <laughs> yeah, that's a yeah. What, what Don? What, what what do you make of the fact that Biden just kind of has vanished, and his wife has started doing his uh, his social media and his video appearances and everything? <laughs> well, you know, a front porch campaign might not might not be a bad idea. <laughs> uh, 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 the interest. Uh, uh, I found it interesting. Trump said uh, yesterday he was anxious to get out on the road and uh, and uh, 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 have rallies with his uh, large rally. But but um, unfortunately, what's happened is uh, uh, the media has taken over the message. And uh, uh, quite frankly, what was to me a shoe in Trump's reelection is now a horse race. Not because. Um, uh, President Trump did anything wrong, but uh, uh, events have simply over overtaken him. And uh, uh, I frankly think Biden is uh, uh, doing the smart thing. Keep your mouth shut and let other people talk for you. Uh, I think uh, he, he's running a shrewd campaign. Uh, and it is a campaign. Make no mistake about it. We, we just had uh, uh, hold on to your hats, folks. You know, Hillary Clinton just uh, uh, um, uh, approved this nomination you know uh, and that well that was page 16 on the post it uh, was page two on the new york times but uh, the point is he, uh, he's having a drip effect every day there's somebody else coming out for him and uh, uh, no matter what trump does uh, the media is going to say that he should have done the opposite so uh, it, it's going to be a much closer campaign than I had envisioned in the past, uh, uh, before all of this. Uh, and I, uh, I think that this <clears throat> pandemic came at the worst possible time for Trump. Uh, yes. Because uh, before that, he couldn't lose. Now, uh, to, uh, today, but uh, what I found interesting is, uh, my wife read it to me, the latest poll, 48% of Democrats think closing the border is a good idea, and 48% think it's a bad idea. And interestingly enough, there wasn't a, a com comparable uh, polling of the Republicans. But that's the first time you even had uh, 
parity in the Democratic Party about closing the border. So uh, uh, the world is changing. And uh, uh, if you ask me, uh, and you're not, a, well, I'm going to say it anyway, who, who knows what's going to happen? Um, who knows what's going to happen? But uh, IQ, can I quote you my favorite line from A Thousand Clowns? She says, come back to reality. And he replies, I'll only go as a tourist. <laughs> so, uh, and I, I, I firmly be believe in that, you know. Um, and uh, we're in a never never land. Uh, back to you, IQ. I could, you know, I could go on forever. <laughs> Yeah, you should. You should. You, you have the floor. It's no problem. But I'll tell you what. The Le Democrats are committing suicide every single day. Biden is finished. Whether he keeps his mouth shut, whether his wife talks on his behalf, he is finished. Why wow. he's finished? Because some of the women now, those who have been silent, are now attacking him. Yes. Yeah. The game is changing, believe me. I don't think he will ever make it to November 2020. Well, well, the best, uh, the, the Democrats hope that uh, something will happen because they know, know uh, with a candidate like Cuomo or uh, Newsom from California, they stand a much better chance of winning the White House. Yes. Um, uh, and uh, they're hoping something will happen uh, between now and the convention. Um, that will somehow or other, and uh, and the worst possible one from our point of view is that uh, this idea that he has of bringing uh, Michelle Obama in as his vice president and then resigning on January 22nd is just scary as hell. Oh uh, my God, that that is that is something that I have not heard. Oh no, that is a very very current rumor. Uh, I've, I've heard it from three different sources, and uh, um, wow. President Obama nor Michelle have done anything to scotch it. <laughs> Holy smokes. So, essentially, <laughs> he would get in there, then he would resign, and then she would take... So, who, who would be the... In, in that process, who becomes the VP then? Well, after, she, after he drops, she becomes the VP the president, and she will elect a VP. What's the big deal? Well, then, uh, I believe it's the Senate. Uh, I'm trying to remember the Constitution law, but I believe the Senate then um, votes, uh, uh, they nominate somebody to be vice president. Um, I, I, well, that's what was done with Gerald Ford, and I'm just, I can't remember whether it's the House or the Senate that nominates the the new vice president. Or the, Maybe the House nominates and the Senate approves. I should know it, but I don't. I apologize. Wow. Um, but 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 that is a very current rumor, uh, uh, Jiggy. That, holy uh, crap. Well, not really. It's not very. That holy crap. It makes sense. He is. He knows. There is no question in my mind that Joe Biden knows he's losing it. He knows he's losing. Oh it. yeah. But he is determined to be elected, to have yes. a vice president that of his choice, and to leave literally a few months or a few weeks after that and resigns and leaves it completely to somebody else. <coughs> yes. Good Lord. Yes. That, the, 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 the odds are in Washington that if Biden were elected, the odds are, I think this, what I heard was nine to one that he would not survive his first term. Uh, in fact, and, and I, that I got I, from somebody in, in Washington. Not as good as I used to have sources, but uh, a fairly good source. No, I uh, agree with them. Whoever it was, nine to one, I agree with you. But whether he will survive up to, up to November is another story also. Supposing he drops dead, then what happens? <laughs> yeah. well, the, the, the Democrats will, go, will, will say that Malvin is because they would really like to put somebody else in, like Cuomo or Newsom. And, I, you know, I keep saying Newsom because he is the logical candidate. Uh, but he's I, a failure. He's a failure. <laughs> he's, he's a failure. 
There is a failure in his own state. But if somebody who is a failure in his own state, why create him as the president of the United States of America? Why? I mean... Uh, to quote P.C. Barnum, no one ever got to... Uh, 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 no one ever uh, um, uh, lost money underestimate, uh, underestimating the intelligence of the American uh, public. That I, I agree with you, honestly. I always <laughs> said that 47% are brain dead anyway. We agreed that. I'm not changing my mind at all. 47 are brain dead. But supposing out of the 47, after four years of good behavior, good economy, good labor, so uh, true, the coronavirus changed everything. Yeah, everything. Absolutely. Okay, but that doesn't yeah. mean it doesn't mean it's uh, Donald Trump's fault. Nothing to do with him. It doesn't make any difference. Oh, no, no, it I... does. It does. It does. No, sorry. You can't be so brain dead. I don't think the American people are that brain dead. Um, um, I wish yeah, I could agree with you, but... Uh, okay, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll find out in November. I would say the 6% would uh, jump with well, Trump. I just hope you're, you're right, uh, uh, IQ, but I, I just have to throw that in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you're, I, hedging your, yeah. you're hedging your bets. I, <laughs> I want to hedge my bets. Can I, can I give you a, a positive one to talk about? Yes, yes go ahead. Yes, I'm dying too. Okay. I, I was on with the classroom at the Columbia College in Chicago, which, by the way, is, is one of the most underrated schools I run across. Okay, Columbia College in Chicago. And it was a group of uh, students. We were doing it through Zoom. Uh, and uh, uh, one, of the, one of the questions one of them said is, um, we talked about media, et cetera. And I said I was old school, which was, uh, you know, we were taught present the facts and let the audience uh, decide. You know, something that we seem to have lost in, in media today. And the student piped up and said, that's what we, we was being pounded into our heads here. And I was so glad to hear there was still a, a journalism school that still taught the old way of, you know, present the facts and let the reader decide. And I, uh, I had to bring it up, Jiggy, because it's, uh, having dealt with other journalism schools in recent years, it is a, a happy note. And I, I, like I always say, I always have faith in the republic because some, somehow or other it always survives. And, but I had to bring it up. No, I, I think it's great. I think that. Yeah. yeah I, I think that's great. No, it's good. It's, it's good to hear a positive thing in a university in America. Honestly, considering yeah. most of the teachers and the professors are left-wing, brain-dead people who. <laughs> But they are, honestly. I always Every love when I hear a professor to people from dead. Harvard or professor <laughs> from somebody, they turn out to be so stupid. I, I, I keep asking my question, how did they become professors? Why aren't I? I should be a super professor of Islam. <laughs> a super professor. Honestly. Well, uh, uh, speaking of that, we, we have gotten uh, a lot of feedback from that uh, that debate that really wasn't a debate uh between iq and nelson l a few weeks ago uh there has been all sorts of people that have uh wrote me and uh told me that uh iq has the patience of a saint <laughs> i don't believe it <laughs> Why can't why can't I see these emails? I will I will dig up some emails and send them to you because no no I mean it honestly well, I don't know why they get, don't get in touch with me. <laughs> my, what I have to do is was it was it that you, bad, Jiggy? Sorry. Well, no, no, I'll tell you what, I'll I, tell you, Dan, IQ, uh, no, sorry, sorry. you, you, you filled Dan in on on Tuesday. Fill Don in now and tell him exactly what went down. Don, the guy created. He belongs to a new group of Muslims. <laughs> he plays. He plays on words. He spelled Islam in a different way. You know, I was going to tell him uh, Nelson, but I've got to call him Nelson L. That's right. That's important. <laughs> Without the L, uh, it makes him uh, a, a, what do you call it? Um, an ordinary Muslim. Yes. But he's extraordinary. <laughs> L is God. So Nelson, God. Okay. I was going to tell him 
a rose by any other name is still a rose. <laughs> so you, by spelling it different, is still your Islam. Not only this, but he believes in a prophet, another prophet called Ali, Yes. From the 19th century, Some... which is contrary to everything that Muslim believes in, because every Muslim will tell you <laughs> there are no prophets after Muhammad. Some unknown so the prophet. The Muslim. There was nothing to discuss. <laughs> it was. Well, it... So what do they say? It... Well, that I'm patient, and that's it. Well, they they they, they said that you were very patient. Uh, I've I've had a few other people tell me that uh, that they they were shocked that that you didn't just. Uh, you know, tear tear him a new a hole. I can't things. tear him. I, honestly, <laughs> I can't tear him. There, he doesn't believe in the Quran. I mean, if if he doesn't believe that Muhammad is the last of the prophets according to Islam, so what am I going to discuss? He was committing suicide with his own language, so I let him do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, but it was very. I uh, kill. Let me ask you a question. Do you think that the um, the Muslim worlds are underreporting the, uh, the uh, their losses from from the virus from the virus? Of course, for God's sake. First of all, let's look at the Muslim world. If American news media lie twenty four hours a day in front of your face, and that's American news media, and the European ones do exactly the same, and we are supposed to be democracies, what do you expect from? authoritarian dictatorships telling you the truth. China didn't give tell the truth. The Iranians are threatening America with the new weapons. Now let me try to un understand the mentality. Iran is 80 million. America is 330 million. America is the most powerful military machine on earth today. Iran is a piece of shit militarily. Oh. It is. It's a, Listen to me. Look at their aircraft. They have the aircraft from 1979. They don't have many aircraft which are modern. They have little boats harassing the Americans. Donald Trump was right. Blow them up. If I were the ship cart captain in the Harmon Street, I would have given them one shot warning. One. After that, I blow them up. You want war? I will give you the war that you love. <laughs> Quick. Sharp, deadly, and no boots on the ground. They are lying. All of them are lying. Now, how is it possible Muslims don't catch coronavirus, but all the Christians are catching it? Tell me, please. <laughs> Tell me, please. How is it possible? Especially, especially with large families and families, multi generational families. You know, uh, I'm, I'm just surprised. I'm, uh, I, I, no, no, because you, of course you're surprised. They tell you that 7,000 people are dead in Iran. 7,000? The number of dead that the satellites are so showing, the ones they're burying in fields equal to football fields. Yes. More than, more than 7,000. More than 7,000. The, by the way, the Chinese were burning people at an incredible rate in ovens, oh. in crematoria. I mean, these statistics are not mine. These are coming from the sources. They all lie. But it doesn't matter whether they lie or not. It absolutely doesn't matter. I don't care what they do. We must not allow Muslims to come to America. We must not allow Muslims to come to any country outside the land of the Muslims. It's that simple. It's not complicated. That should be the rule of law. Boy, how cruel you are, IQ. <laughs> how old if you I don't... Uh, how cruel you are you? You're, cruel, you're, right? IQ, you, you want to keep them out. How cruel are you? It, no. <laughs> I'm cruel to the Muslims. I'm giving them sanction. They want Sharia. Go to your bloody country and have Sharia. Don't come to a Christian country and have Sharia. By the way, they are allowing in Minnesota and some other states or cities to blare the call of to prayer in the mosques in America. Thank you.
and we are having Sharia implied in America. God, I mean, it's just stupid, stupid people. The leaders are stupid people. They're criminal. They're not stupid, by the way. They really are criminal. Because when you have a leader, a mayor, or a governor, or even a president, who is not willing to even read the Quran, not study it. And many times I said to you guys, there are 114 chapters, don't waste your time. <laughs> chapters 2 to chapter that. 9, eight bloody chapters. After that, if you don't agree with me, you should be put in a mental asylum. <laughs> What more I always, can I tell you? I always love <laughs> IIQ and his uh, his common sense way of, of looking at things. <laughs> but Jim, <laughs> if you Jim, don't agree, you need to be put in a mental asylum. <laughs> to, be, yeah, to, to be fair, honestly, James, to be fair, yes. has anybody been able to find fault with it? I say, no. Has anybody challenged me? Never. No, and I'll tell you, we've we've had, you know, I I'm trying to remember who that was. We had a. Uh, a gentleman a few years ago, he was a... Correct, uh, absolutely correct. An elderly gentleman, a black guy. Yeah, he was a convert, and... Uh, yes, yes, yes. He, he was very good, young. He was a young, an old man, very nice guy, a gentleman. Yes. I didn't tear him up, honestly. I was no. so polite to him. No. I was very polite to him. I asked him the questions. He answered it in the wrong way, his way, which is Islamic way, but I didn't <laughs> tell him. Really. I, I, I <laughs> empathize with him because usually a convert to any religion, anybody who goes becomes, let's say, a Catholic, he becomes more popish than who. A person yes. who becomes a Muslim, he becomes more radical than ISIS. That's not an exaggeration, it's a fact. They want to prove not only to themselves, but to the Muslim community that they are definitely Muslims. So they go overboard. But that's a fact. No, uh, in, in their countries, Christians are not allowed to peel their bells. Did you know that, by the way? Really? I was not aware of this. Good God. Are you serious? You should. I'll tell you what you should do. Google the Charter of Omar. Yes, Google that. The Charter of Omar. Omar, U-M-A-R, you will cry, literally you will cry. The number of humiliating commandments against the Christians and the Jews by the Muslims under Sharia are enormous and disgusting, and they have been applied for 1,400 years. Mm. The Charter of Omar. Speaking you can of do it now. speaking of Omar, uh, yeah. what, 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 what what do you make of the uh, of the recent uh, you know this this Ilhan Omar and some of the things that she's been talking about and saying? Uh, uh, okay. uh, can I jump in here and tell yes, you? Yes, go ahead, Ron. Um, I don't mean to uh, jump over the IQ, but but uh, I had a discussion. I don't think she's worth the coverage. You know, well are, that too. Uh, that's 238 members of Congress. I think that's the number. Um, you know, and uh, there's a lot of other members who say a lot more, more interesting things that we never hear about. You know, like, um, I'll give you a very simple example of the um, congressman from uh, Iowa that, that uh, raised the issue two months ago about his concern about the, the meat supply. And no yes. one ever covered the story, except the Des Moines uh, paper. Now, here was a congressman that was talking about an issue that two months from now we had to get the president to, to make a presidential order to keep it out, and no one covered it. And we talked to this, this Omar says something, and all of a sudden we're, we're talking about it. Uh, I don't mean to jump on top. It's just no. I'm tired. I'm tired of hearing about it. What she says doesn't have, uh, doesn't amount to a hell of beans, you know. Uh, yeah, yeah, you know. And there's a real question whether she's going to be reelected, because the two or three people in her district are, are uh, uh, you know, are starting to look at it. And the Democratic Party realizes that she's moving them too far to the left. So you know, um, I'm. 
I, I would much rather say, you know, you, you, I don't care what you say, Omar. <laughs> Stay the hell home and take care of your babies. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, you know, we, we have more pressing issues. The Congress, uh, I, I use that as the only example because I happen to read, and I'm sorry I can't remember the Congress name, but uh, he was, unfortunately he happened to be a Republican who two months ago raised the alarm about the the, uh, the, the meat, uh, the uh, meat packing industry, and, and, and said, we're going to face a problem. Yes. And no one listened to him. Okay? Uh, he wasn't even on Fox. Um, so, uh, get off my high horse again. I'm just, 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 <laughs> no, 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 no. You're good. But, you're good. Don, you're missing the most important thing. Your justice system doesn't exist in America. She lied about her marriage. She lied about the way she applied for her citizenship. She, she cheated on the tax return. Everybody knows she did it. Everybody proves she did it, and yet she's above the law. Why is that, please? And you have a Lieutenant General, Flynn, a general, a decorated man, destroyed completely with a single lie that they say he made to the FBI. Uh -huh. They destroyed his life com completely. He had to sell his house. He can't afford this. He can't afford that. And yet you talk about justice system in America. Bull crap. Absolute <laughs> bull crap. Uh, 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 I, kill, I quote Paul Molshein, who, who's a columnist here in New Jersey in the Star Ledger. And he wrote a couple of notes or a month and a half ago, a line that I, I've quoted. He said he used to idolize politicians until he started to cover them. <laughs> <laughs> and that has got to be one of the all-time great lines I have heard. That's and, fantastic. It's true. <laughs> um, it's true. <laughs> when, you know, uh, uh, when I was younger, uh, uh, much younger, and the callow youth, uh, I, I, I used to believe in, in, the inst in the institutions because of the people that I met. But what is really bothering me is that uh, today we, we seem to have people who don't lead. Well, whatever you got to say about uh, Trump, he leads. You know, it may not like yeah. the way, where he's going, but he leads. And this, I think, really bothers the media and bothers other politicians because uh, it's something they follow. They follow the trends, uh, and instead of uh, taking positive positions or even negative positions, there's nothing wrong with saying, I don't believe in this, but say it rather than wishy washy. And uh, you know, to me, the, the greatest uh, uh, person, I think, uh, really a disgrace that uh, we should, instead of calling McCarthyism, we should call it shiftism. Because the uh, Congress, <laughs> should, you, you know, they use that to say McCarthyite this or that. But if you look at what Shift has done compared to what uh, Joe McCarthy did, um, you know, there's no comparison. Yeah, but well, Joe McCarthy was right, by the way. Uh, yes. In the end, he was right. He was right. <laughs> he was right. He was right all the time. Uh, the number of it. people who were pro-communists were enormous, absolutely <laughs> enormous. Absolutely. And by the way, just um, uh, uh, I always recommend. I'm, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I, I can please. I'm no, just, don't be silly. Come on, I'm listening. Uh, no, they had a list of the t ten top movies on. Uh, 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 Washington, and they didn't include Advise and Consent, one of the great all-time movies. Uh, if you ever get a chance to see it, uh, I always recommend it. You know, it. It was a Washington that I that I covered, and it's a Washington that no longer exists. The senator actually took, in one scene, the senator actually took a, a streetcar to the, to the Senate. In, in this day and age, and, and the uh, vice president took a plane from LaGuardia to Washington, and he sat in the front. Uh, you know, well, now they ride, ride around in limousines and private planes. 
But in, in those days, uh, uh, Harry Truman said it best. He thought the president was the servant of the people, and when he left the White House, he thought he got promoted. What a great line. You know? <laughs> That's great. Um, I, I, I just, uh, I'm, you know, this. Uh, <laughs> It's, in times of stress, the nation is supposed to pull together. But before we can pull together, we have pulled together, you see these politicians already saying we should have an investigation of this. Investigation. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, come on. Uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, it, it, it's just ridiculous. Uh, we, we had a problem. We threw money at it. And, and by the way, the other thing is, I don't know if you've seen today's Wall Street Journal, but uh, uh, there are three or four companies, private companies, not government, who now are, are close to developing a vaccine against this uh, disease. And, you know, they're going, to, they're going to trials in either August or September. And again, what is it? It's private enterprise doing what it does best, identifying a problem and finding a solution, you know? Yes. Uh, they're not one, not two, not three, but a half a dozen companies say, well, we're going this and we're going that. And if you, to me, what is really uh, interesting is the fact that, the, the, that trying drugs and trying different things, yeah, some of them don't work, and, and we do lose lives, but at least they're trying. To me, that, that to me is, is the thing. They're trying different things. Uh, and that to me is the most important thing and it's not the government doing it it's private enterprise yes because a government would deal with only one issue private enterprise takes on four five seven eight people looking at it from different points of view attacking the same issue that's mm -hmm. the difference mm -hmm. by the way you're talking about uh, how corrupt they are pelosi to show her fridge freezer Oh, yeah, well, I saw that. Four thousand dollars Talk about hypocrisy. Talk about stupidity. Talk about no concern for the American people. That piece of garbage did that. And they still I'm, I'm elected. sorry, I can't. I didn't hear. Which one is this? Pelosi, uh, she showed her ice cream. Have you seen the it Pelosi was, thing when she went on uh, one of the late shows and... Uh, they were talking about, you know, how are you keeping, uh, you know, how are you keeping cool or whatever during the lockdown? And she showed this giant, these two giant fridges full of ice cream. And she was talking about how great it was that she had all this ice cream. And it's like, okay, you've got all this stuff. Why there's the average American can't pay their freaking rent. <laughs> well, not to understand. <laughs> <laughs> so. Well done. To yes, go, go ahead, IQ. Jump in there. No, no, Don should see that. He hasn't seen this. That's why he doesn't know. Hey, I'm asleep by 9 o'clock. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, honestly, you should see it. It's amazing how degrading her behavior was. Yeah. I mean, and the elector, she's 80 bloody years old. They elect her again and again and again. Oh, Nancy? Pelosi? Yeah. Oh, okay. But what about in Hawaii, where, the, where this uh, 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 beer brewing company has started to give away uh, 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 hand sanitizers with the beer when they someone bought beer, and uh, and the uh, uh, the authority said that they were offering a discount and uh, uh, want uh, want to uh, fine them for giving away the hand sanitizers. Yeah, well. <laughs> This is what makes America great, believe me. Well, yeah. what can I say? You know, but I, to, to turn it around, I mean, you, you know, um, um, what did uh, Tip O'Neill say? All politics are local. Yes. I had a problem with my tree and I, uh, I, uh, in my front yard, and it blew over yesterday. And I called up my public works people, and they came, and they, they tried to keep it together. And we have a gale force wind, and uh, it blew it over today. And by uh, 5 o'clock today, they have taken the tree, cut it down, and taken it away. I mean, you know, you, you wow. can say what you, what you will, but uh, if, you, if your local government works well, 
it, it, it really, you know, you, you got to say thank you. But um, uh, the trouble is, the further away you get from the local government, the less responsive they are to the American people. That's my belief. But uh, I could be wrong. <laughs> no, you're right. Oh, well, as I always say, the only time, last time I was wrong was September seventh, nineteen sixty-eight, when I married my first, when I married my first wife. But that's another story. <laughs> so, uh, so Don, what, what do you, you know, you you host, uh, you know, you're you're part of SB Digest. You've got a small business program. Well, what do you make of the fact that the small business loans went to people like the L.A. Lakers? <laughs> <laughs> well, all I got to say is thank God for the media. But you, you, you know as well as I do, in any place in the world, it's not what you know, it's who you know. Yes. Okay? Yes. Uh, and, and by the way, let's turn it around. Let me give you an interesting statistic. Small businesses, 80% uh, of the small businesses in, that received money in the, in the first uh, month of of, of this uh, crisis received it from the community banks, not from the big banks. Okay, that, that's the statistic I got from a very reputable uh, small business uh, group. So, uh, be, because the community banks uh, uh, turned it around quicker, and also they knew uh, the, their local small business. And, yes. and there's no doubt that if you look at the numbers, if you knew your banker, you were more likely to get that money than if you didn't uh, know your banker. There's a, a close correlation. So uh, what I think about it, sure. Um, snakes, uh, Shake Snack uh, uh, got it. Hey, there you are, Jiggy, that beautiful continents over there. The, uh, look at that. Oh, uh -oh. look at that. The, 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 the cat is, is, is knocking, the, knocking the camera. Okay, so uh, go ahead, Don. Go ahead. No, uh, I, I really enjoy your programs, Diggy. Uh, <laughs> there's such a change from uh, the world I live in. But, uh, <laughs> well, some something else that I that I want to uh, there there there's making a there there's a lot of videos making the rounds of these of these doctors iq talked about this earlier there's a lot of medical professionals that are coming out that are now saying you know all this stuff was overblown we shouldn't be wearing these masks because you're breathing in the uh the the stuff that you're supposed to expel out of your lungs you're breathing it back in uh what do you make of this don uh, I don't know. Uh, I, I, I swear by my two doctors, and they say, wear the mask, be careful. Okay? They've kept me alive yeah. 77 years. <laughs> so, uh, you know, uh, hey, my A1C is under 7, and, uh, you know, the, both of them said the same thing. I'm, and I'm sure that there are other doctors around there. Uh, I have constant fights with my wife because... She says, put on the mask, don't, let's not go out, let me do the shopping, I don't want you in the store. Yeah. She's a lot younger than me. Um, but uh, um, I do believe it's overblown. I think uh, it, it certainly uh, flattened the curve. Um, do I believe we'll have a resurgence later on this year? No question in my mind. Because the, uh, the people in general are simply, uh, um, uh, you know, the, they they're gonna let let it go. Look, the minute you they open the, the the beaches in Florida, what did they do? They congregated. What did they do in California? They congregated. It's gonna happen. Um, I think the the other doctors are probably right. We overblew, but uh, maybe uh, uh, erring in the side of caution maybe is the answer. Uh, I I wish I knew. My two doctors say be careful. And wear the mask. I, that's what. I'm, uh, that's how I answer that question, Jiggy. So IQ, what what do you make of all this? I go to work every day. Every day I go to work. I keep my distance from other people. I wear the mask when I'm going out, in, yeah. in like shopping. Yeah. But I go to the park. I don't wear the mask, because the park there are many, not many people, and the people who are there keep their distances. If you have 
two, three, four meters away from each other, the chances of you catching anything is practically zero. Yeah. Practically zero. Mm. And if you have a mask, it's even better. But what I'm getting at is we have, our leaders have overreacted, not the first month, not the first six weeks, yeah. but after the first six weeks, they destroyed the economies all over the world. So all of them were wrong. All of them were wrong. Look, Dr. Fauci, he accepted the report from Imperial College in England. The estimate was 2 million dead in America. Yes. After a few weeks, it came out to 200,000, then 68,000, then 60,000. Wait a minute. <laughs> if you're putting garbage in, of course you get garbage out. Yes. Well, you know, I don't know if you're aware, but but today the uh, uh, the MTA in New York is closing down the subways between one and five in the morning. Um, to wow. Uh, basically, I think to force the homeless people off the subways, so that a they can clean them and b start to put that problem. Uh, I think we, we, you're going to find uh, when we go forward that the homeless population is, is an epi epicenter of uh, contagion um, that uh, we won't recognize because it's uh, poor. It's poor media, but I think that you're going to see when this all is said and done that is going to be the, um, one of the epicenters of uh, the spread of this virus. Well, there's a lot of people that, uh, in in fact, one of my uh, one of my compadres, I guess you would say, up there in, in Colorado, Mr. Ross Long, told me the other day about he'd he started seeing some stories that uh, the Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas was one of the uh, the places that spread all this pretty quickly, uh, and that was two weeks before uh, I went out for the uh, for the ABNs. Yeah. <laughs> we know about that. I'm sent, uh, hey, Jiggy, I'm sending you a PhD. In porn <laughs> no, no, she is. Um, I'm, I'm just waiting. Uh, I, you know, I, I attended the National uh, Publicity uh, yes. Summit. Yes. Uh, and uh, the, the, I told us I'm waiting for her to send the email so I can send it to you because. Uh, that that's the program I want to be on because she studied <laughs> porno. I said I know just the guy. <laughs> I know the just guy. the guy. Yes. <laughs> so what 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 do you make of the fact that Don that the uh, that the Consumer Electronics Show might have been a uh, <laughs> a breeding ground to spread this with all the new technology and people touching you know on the. <laughs> On all the screens. No, I heard that uh, four weeks ago, um, and uh, there, there is a clear path. And you're you're going to discover, uh, uh, I believe, when they, when they study all of this, that that is the case. I don't doubt it. Um, uh, I I believe it. It is. I believe it will be because don't forget, it's the one show where West meets East. Um, and really, uh, mingle with what is it? Twenty thousand. Oh yeah, people. yeah. And twenty, and you you have everybody coming in, and uh, the answer is absolutely believed. I believe it to be the case. It's just uh, it it it's an it's incredibly uh, incredibly well, insane that 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 happened that way. Well, don't forget the the CES show. By the way, you know I covered the first twelve. CES show. The oh, first wow. one, well, you could it was in a hotel, one hotel. Now there are 20, 000, <laughs> 20 to thirty thousand attendees, but um, uh, and now it's spread over. I don't know how many. Oh yeah. But, uh, it, it's a huge thing, but the, but the answer is there's no no, no question that uh, uh, that there, that is that will be one of the epicenters. Because uh, they're starting to really uh, identify the epicenters. I saw a study, uh, the one of the first preliminary studies I saw yesterday, that uh, you, uh, I, people are, I'm under a, um, a non-disclosure at the moment. Well, yeah. But, but uh, people are going to be surprised at, at how the virus grew. 
um, of the spread. Uh, and what, what is coming up from the study is uh, some things that really uh, are shocking people. So it's the, the first, first uh, draft is coming out in two weeks, and I hope to bring it to the show so we can discuss it. That's awesome. That would be great. Well, as we wrap up here, uh, let's start with IQ. IQ, uh, give us your take on today's show and, and how people can find you and everything. Well, as usual, our talk between ourselves is infinitely better than if you bring a leftist. <laughs> Anytime. <laughs> Anytime. And all you have to do is Google my name, Al Rasuli, A L R A S O L I. And if you want my book, it's called Lifting the Veil The True Faces of Muhammad and Islam. It's a tri trilogy. It's on Amazon. Back to you, sir. Okay, Don, uh, before we let you go, how do, how do we find all the things you're involved in? The, the National Robotics Education Foundation, the, the hyphen NREF. 